Samuel 24. Today I, I want to break a news to you that has been kept probably from some of you. Um, I want to talk to you on the subject or what I call stop that plague. You can stop it. Nobody should deceive you. Stop that plague. It's of the enemy. Sure, you can turn it around. I have no doubt in my mind that you, in the name of Jesus, can turn the situation around. Second Samuel chapter 24 and look at verse 1. And again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. If you have modern translations of the Bible, it will tell you, And the devil moved David. Does anybody have that? If you look in some translations, it said the devil moved David to number Israel. If you have a good Bible, you will find that there is a marking and it will tell you that it is the devil. God didn't move him. Now, because David left the will of God, for God told Abraham, I will give you children as the sun on the seashore and as the stars in the heavens. No man can be able to number them. Therefore, censoring Israel was violating the word of God. So when David was moved by the devil against the will of God, he looked at Israel and released plagues. Look at verse 10. And the heart and David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet God, David's seer, saying, Go! And say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things, choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God came to David and told him and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine come unto thee in thy land? Or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies? while they pursue thee, or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise and see what I answer, I mean, and see what answer I shall return to him that sent me. And David said unto God, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. May that be your prayer today. Why? Man has no mercy. Why? Best 
ਕਿ ਲੈ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਮਸੀ ਹਸ 15 ਸੋ ਦ ਲਾਰਡ ਸੈਂਟ ਪੈਸਟੀਲੈਂਸ ਅਪੋਨ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਇਲ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਮੋਰਨਿੰਗ ਈਵਨ ਟੂ ਦ ਟਾਈਮ ਅਪੋਇੰਟਡ and they are died of the people from Dan even to Bathsheba 70,000 men sometimes we say to ourselves a little mistake won't do much harm it looked so little just to count to send so in my human mind I see nothing wrong with it but there is so much wrong with it because once david sent for the israel he will begin to put his confidence in the number of the army because he will know how many soldiers there are how many people are in israel and God wanted Israel's confidence to be in him my friend God is not saying you shouldn't take an account of what is in your house your bank or wherever God is saying some trust in horses and some in chariots but as for us our trust shall be in the name of the Lord our God God said by Zechariah it's not by might not by the strength of an army it is not by power it is by my spirit as quiet and serene as my spirit looks he is all powerful jesus said and you shall receive power after that the holy ghost that spirit that looks quiet the comforter the helper yet he is the power and the warrior if you can trust him for the bible said when the spirit of god will come upon samson he becomes another man the spirit of god can bless yet the spirit of god can destroy is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord why he is a consuming fire my friend when god spoke to joshua he said the book of the law shall not pass out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate every day and night observe do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success he said see that thou turn not to the left nor to the right you must be careful to follow the word of god no haphazardness There's no lightning about the things of God. When God said don't censor, it meant don't censor. Somebody said, "But God didn't tell me he told Abraham, are you a seed of Abraham?" God said, "My covenant is with thee and thy seed throughout their generation." David made another mistake 
almost similar to this. Somebody says, in the day of ignorance God overlooks, I tell you, the days of ignorance has gone. Because now you have the B-I-B-L-E on your lap. You have it in your house. Some of you pick it in your purses and in your bags and in your pockets and, and there in, 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 in your cars and wherever. The Philistines have been plagued by the ark of God. And they brought the ark and kept it in Ephesus. In the woods. And David heard that the ark was there lonely. And David said that the ark should be taken. When the Philistines were returning it because of ignorance, they made a brand new cart to carry the ark. That was wrong. God told Moses how the ark should be carried. It must be carried by priests upon their shoulders. They must be sanctified and be dressed in the priestly garment. When David went to take the ark, they placed it in the car. Wrong move. And priests followed. And when they came, the ark tilted, or the, the cart, and the ark was falling. And Uzzah put his hand to stop the ark. That was an honorable thing. For goodness sake, did that man sin? To you, did he? Is it bad to see that a ministry is faltering and you try to block and stop it? The ark was going was going to fall. That meant God was going to fall. Uzzah put his hand to stop it. He was slain dead. Why? The anger of God came on Israel because they were doing the right thing the wrong way. The plague could be in your life because you are doing the right thing. The wrong way. The whole priest died. Why? He is a priest. He ought to know how. They've been reading the book. They never remembered. You've been reading this book. Don't forget it. That was the problem. The man died and David feared God. He said, we are not touching it again. Obededun took the ark to his house and the man prospered. I love David. I just finished talking to you about Rachel. When she saw Leah giving birth to children, having fruit, she held her husband and said, Give me children or I die. When David had obeyed that he was prospering, he said, It shall not be so. The ark shall come unto David. Read the Bible. The ark shall come unto David, unto my city, that I might prosper. That pushed David to go and find out in the books how the ark should be carried. Now, when they came, four priests carried the ark, but every seven steps they stopped and wonderful sacrifices were made from Obededum's house to the city of Zion. It took sacrifice to stop the plague for David. Am I talking to you? There is a plague on the loose in the country. In fact, in the whole world. If I may get you back 
into history. The plague has been eaten. When God saw that the plague of sin was eating humanity, he made an altar and put a sacrifice on it called Jesus Christ. And he stopped the plague. Stop that plague in your life. You can and you will. Today, not tomorrow. Lest I just get into all that I needed to say before I read it. Let's finish the reading. I read verse 15 again. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning even to the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Bathsheba 70,000 men. Please don't wait until you lose 70,000 men, naira, clothes, houses, whatever. Don't wait. Verse 16. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough! Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arwana, the Jebusite. Please, i like you to watch your Bible closely. And please, I beg you, if it you like on my knees, to hear me clearly today. The devil has nothing to do in your life. When you find destructions or problems, God has his hand there. It is God doing it. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. There is no way darkness can touch you. Get that settled. You are far above all principality and power and might and dominion you are seated together with the king the devil I repeat the devil can do the child of God nothing if you are still walking in the faith oh my god the bible said light came into the world and the darkness comprehended it not that means if you are born again you are a child of light and the devil does not understand you he can't trace you he can't put anything on your body he does not know so when calamities begin know it is god oh jesus christ I hope you are hearing me. Go back and read the book. When Israel was in Egypt, the Egyptians tormented them. But when they came to the land of promise, God spoke after King Solomon had finished building the temple. In Second Chronicles 7, he said, If I should shock the heavens that there be no rain, if I should send pestilence, if I... It is God. It is God. Whatever you are passing through, my friend, it is God. He is only using that situation as an instrument of cohesion. Oh God. I like to hear you say amen if you understand what I'm saying. I swear to you, by this book and in the name of Jesus Christ, that the devil can do you nothing. Absolutely nothing. You are not in his class. 
If you are born again, you tower over him. You are a colossus. You are a giant. You are a treasure. You work with the kings. You are not a mere man. You are not in that ranking. You are a child of God. You are a saint. You are a holy nation. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people, my friend. Never, never demean yourself. If I, he said, if you go to Daniel chapter 9, Daniel was praying, he said, we, we have not hearkened to your word, nor to your prophets that you sent. Therefore, we know you brought us here. Nebuchadnezzar has no might to capture Israel. Jesus said to Pilate, Pilate was bragging, he said, don't you know I have power to let you go or kill you? Jesus smiled and said, you have no ounce of power over me unless it is given to you from above. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, can't you see that we are liberated? Can't you see that if there is evil in our life, it is God. You see, is God now producing evil? No. He steps aside and says, give it to them. I want them to know. No evil can befall you all the days of your life. Because he has given his angels charge over thee. To bear thee in the palm of their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Psalm says that the angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him to deliver them. Kai! If there is something wrong in your finances as a Christian, then watch it. There's something wrong with your work. There's something wrong with your, your, your life with God. And God is putting the hold on you until you make the correction. The devil has no part in this matter. Psalm 125 verse 3 says, The rod of wickedness shall not lay on the lot of the righteous. I, the day I understood these scriptures as I am giving you, it changed my life that when I see evil in my life, I know something is wrong with me. If I can write what is wrong here, I will get that dirty thing out because it is not the will of God that anyone should perish. That makes you stop asking the question, why? Why me, Lord? Stop that. That is insulting God. Why you? Do what do you think you are? I repeat, the devil can do nothing in your life. Absolutely nothing. If you see him there, you've done something wrong. And God just opened a little door for him to come in. If you can write yourself and resist him, he will flee. Am I talking, I'm talking to a people? Did you, did you look at the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples? At the end of it, he made that glowing statement. For thine is the kingdom, the 
power and the glory forever and ever. He said it belongs to the Father. And Jesus turned right around and told the disciples that all that the Father has are mine. And Paul wrote to us, he said, we are joint heirs with Christ. So my friend, ours is the kingdom and the glory and the power for 1996? No. For 1997? No. For how? Forever and ever! And in the kingdom of God there is no sickness, no disease, no death, no paralysis, no poverty, nothing, no insanity, no... Come on, my God! He said, he came to preach the kingdom. David made a blunder. Listen. The Lord sent the pestilence. The Lord is not the pestilence. He sent them. We want to watch how this man turned around this thing. <laughs> Come on. Woo! <laughs> Say, I believe it! God will turn it around! Because today I will stop the plague. I believe it. I believe it. Verse 17. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. <laughs> I, want to, I want to show you the way God deals with us. I want you to learn it. If Pastor Joe here sin, Are you hearing? Because he is our head here. If he sins, the Lord never attacks him direct. The Lord will go amongst these church people and begin to cripple the work of his hand. It was David that sinned. It's the people that started dying. Because a king is by the multitude of people. No people, no king. Like Panam, my brother, will say, no worshippers, no God. So, when begins to deal with you for your wrong, he begins to attack the work of your hand. He's going to thin you down. He wants to gain your attention. The contract won't come through. They will pay everybody but you. You see? Oh my God, Reverend, I don't believe this. Why wouldn't you? It's all over the scriptures. It was Jonah that was running away. Was it the old people in the ship? But they lost all the lading, or that is the, the luggage. They threw it into the water. It didn't solve. Perhaps they would have started throwing human beings. Jonah was the one who ran away. The sin, your sin will affect your family, my friend. It will cause your children to be dull. You won't understand why. 
You'll be praying and saying, but I prayed. It's not it. Let me show you something here. Oh, Lord. I, I, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. to deal with a nation the way we are being dealt with. Know that our leaders are corrupt and are bad. Maybe not the present one, but the ones that have been when the trouble started. David sinned. The people began to die. I wish I had time to show you if you, if you look at number 16, when you go home, read it. Call that Dathan and Abiram sin, the plague started from the back. And it was coming. Moses was in the front. The plague started behind. And it was inking into Moses. Let me advise you that the last man to die in a situation of this nature is the man of God. And if you are the one causing the problem in your family, the last one to die will be you. God will take away everything from your hand that you brag about. And then he will look at you and say, okay, brag again. You said you could do it without me. Do it. Let us see. Since you can violate my word. Oh yeah, go ahead. When you wouldn't, then he will now approach you and begin to deal with your body. When Job left faith and began to walk in fear, God never attacked him first. He began with his goods, went to his children, then finally landed on Job. You must learn the principles of God. He starts from afar and begins to come in. He's a wise God. You say, why does he do that? He loves you. Hi. Would you understand that God, God is a jealous God? He wants all your attention. That's why when Isaac came on the scene and Abraham's love changed from God to Isaac, God said, give me Isaac, so your attention will return. Some of you, God has blessed you with great businesses, but you are loving the business more than the God who gave you the business. And God is putting his hand there and saying, Stop! You are going no further. Some of you, it's a husband. God gave you. You prayed. You fasted. You came to church regularly. You sought God. And God finally gave you that fine husband. That fine wife. No, no more. I've got it. I've got it. And God sends the plague coming. You have the wife, but now you don't have the money to take care of the wife. And you will hear most Christians say, Before now, if you know the money I spend, best man, I spend. Money wasn't my problem. But after, and, and I don't know what happened. May I talk to you again and again, that honest to God. How many of you are, have Jesus Christ inside you? The devil is not your match. He's not your mate. He cannot come where you are. I want you to put that inside and let it settle. The devil knows it. It is you that don't know. The devil knows he is not your mate. He would rather be in Sokoto while you are in Joss. He knows that. So when you see the devil coming as far as Joss border until he gets to your compound, you are doing something wrong. Check yourself. And the devil can't come that close because he starts from far. Did you not hear in Psalm 91 concerning the righteous? He said, 
A thousand will fall by his side, ten thousand by his right hand side, yet he will just with his eyes see the recompense of the wicked, and the thing has not come near. It shall not come near thee. When eleven thousand are dead, is still far. But, my friend, it is surely coming until you do something. It is coming until you do something. I hope you've gotten the pattern of God. God, God, God will never, first of all, deal with you. You find out that your shoes are wearing out, remaining two. Your singlets are all gone. For no reason, you hung it on, on, on the line for it to dry. How termites got there, nobody can tell. And now you will think you have a testimony. Praise the Lord. Termites are now flying in the air. They are, it's the Lord. Is the Lord sending them. Is is what? Do you know that many of you have parked your cars in the wrong place? In fact, in the midst of hoodlums, thieves, and nothing was taken. But when you became so careful and parked it in your garage and locked it with key, thieves came. Who do you think permitted them? No thief has right to your house. If one comes, something is wrong. The angels are not on duty again. Somebody has recalled them. Something is missing somewhere. I believe that somebody is getting the thing I'm talking about. God loves you. He won't touch you. He will touch your job first. You will look for another. He will touch it. He's trying to get your attention. And then you are not listening. Then you say, oh, this guy is not listening. Okay. Then you will make you squat with somebody. Then at first you have more money you can contribute the thing later you don't have. You have to depend on him. Then your clothes begin to wear out. Then you begin to beg brothers to drop you, lift you here, drop you there. He's coming closer. He's not yet. He's still far. Then the brother you are living with, for no reason, will just tell you that he has terminated your stay. He wants you to go out. He's tired. Then you go. It's the schooling of the spirit for a disobedient person. Then you who never experience sickness or disease any time, headache begins. And now you have reason to begin to adduce the headache to hardship. It's because I don't eat well, I don't sleep well, I don't wear good clothes. That's why headache. But he said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, he will bless thy bread and thy water. He will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast thee a young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days he will fulfill. And he will send his fear before you as hornets. And he will drive out your enemies from you. Where are you in this program that I'm discussing? Where is your life? David had this problem. The Lord kept coming. The interesting thing about David is he saw the angel that was doing it. Take note, it was the angel of God killing him. It wasn't a demon. May I advise you too that I don't know whether this is what the Bible calls the death angel because if it is, then he was in Egypt too. But that angel 
oh, I studied about angels. When you read Exodus 23, God warned Moses, he said, I'm sending my angel to guide you. He has no mercy. He does not know forgiveness. Angels don't know forgiveness. They don't know I'm sorry. Once the Lord said, destroy them. Even if the whole city is crying, they don't know anything like the cry of the righteous. Am I getting this thing home? And the angel comes just to smite Jerusalem. And you know David lives in Jerusalem. And God said, hold your peace. And God opened David's eye to see the angel. And David saw the angel that was destroying the people. Today, God has sent me to open your eye to see the angel that has been doing the things in your life. It is not a demon. If it is a demon all this time that you say, I'm going you, would have gone. But you bound, you were still there carrying on the job. You think it's a demon? Is an angel. Hmm. Verse 18. You see, David in verse 17 was almost doing the wrong thing. He began to cry and beg. I'm the one who has sinned. Deal with me. Leave these people, they are your sheep. I mean, what have they done? It's me and my father's house that I've seen. You see, this kind of prayer or this kind of uh, pleading does not work with God. There are things that get to God. Have you ever met a mother? I've seen Mama T do that. I've seen quite a number of... I have done it. Your child is sick. You try this, you try that. The child, the sickness doesn't seem to be going. I mean, no, no, no relief. You begin to pray, God, give me the, put the thing on me now. How many mothers have done that? In fact, how many of you have done that? Put it on me, I, I can carry it. I mean, what is this? Innocent baby, what, what, what kind of sickness is coming on this baby? Something is wrong. Since I gave birth to my baby, or in fact all my children, I've never had child problem, sickness, not once. All of them, they are in church today. I, I can imagine. I, we were, it, it, I was staying with, with my brother. I came for weekend in those days. And my... Mama T was, she did not know. Hardly was a young boy. He had his hand by the door. And she walked past the door, and it is common with us, generally in our family, when you pass a door, you are supposed to lock the door. You open past lock. So she passed and locked that door and jammed Hardy's, I think, thumb or so. And the nail went out. Oh boy, this boy cried. And you've never seen Tina in frenzy. She wasn't the only one. I was sweating profusely. If only we could take the pain from this boy. No. God does not work like that. And God has his own way of doing his thing. He will put pressure on your child. The communist loved it. And I'm robbers do it too. If they want to deal with you, they put your child there and put gun on his head. Will you bring the money or he's gone? You cannot. What is money compared to this one? So the all of the, you can learn so much from the Bible, go draw anyone you want. David 
David said, what have they done? Deal with me and my father's house. God said, no, <laughs> that's not the way we operate here. We begin to cripple the work of your hand and move.